Hello and welcome. My name is Joanna. I'm the president of Toastmasters Cluj for a little while at least. Um, I want to wish you a warm welcome and to ask you to raise a hand if you're here for the first time. Okay, awesome. Would you like to share how uh, you found out about us? What are you expecting from this meeting? I saw Bogdan raising a hand. Yes, hello, my name is Bogdan. Hi. I'm in Germany, in Karlsruhe. I'm a master, uh, member at Karlsruhe Toastmaster English Club. Okay. Um, because of Corona, I wanted to see how the how the things are going on in the Cluj at Toastmaster, and maybe to get some new ideas for my club. And I wanted to travel. Admit it. Yes, oh, Adina said that now we can travel all over the country, but yeah, all over the world, and we can see a lot of uh, new ideas and. Maybe to share also ideas and to make friends to have a good time because as TV is not so interesting. I agree. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Bogdan, and welcome. Thank you as well. Anyone else? Sergio? Hello, I'm Sergio Hi. and I'm from Timisoara Toastmasters. And I know from you guys from the division conferences and okay. also a couple of boot camps. Pretty excited okay. to be to be here. I'm gonna well, be welcome, and they are gonna have a speech today, right? Yep. Awesome. Anyone else? I saw another hand uh, raised, but uh, I cannot find the person who who did that. Monica. Yeah. Right. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, nice to see you all here. I'm Hi. from Timshara Toastmaster. So, Sergio is my lovely colleague. And uh, it's so nice to meet him here. I even didn't know that he comes here this evening. So, we are two person in Cognito, in Cluj Toastmaster. <laughs> and um, yes, I'm very happy to be here. And, uh, I hope we will have a nice evening together. Thank you. I hope so as well. And um, at the end of the meeting, I'm going to ask you how you felt about this and if you found ideas that you want to steal and take away in your clubs. I was thinking that uh, we can travel now and uh, we can meet friends all over the world and all we have to do is to pay our internet subscription and that's it. <laughs> So um, let's um, start the, the evening. Um, you saw maybe that uh, in the uh, left corner, if you're on a desktop or in the right corner, if you're on a phone, you're going to see a red button that says recording. This means that our sessions are being recorded because at the end of uh, each meeting, we will... Um, um, look at uh, the recordings in order to uh, give ourselves some feedback and to see how we did on the virtual stage uh, set up for, for us. If you do not uh, want to appear on the internet alongside with us, um, please uh, turn off your cameras or just uh, let our PR department uh, know and they can blur out your, uh, your image. Um, so what do we do here? Um, our mission is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. In order to do that, each of us will come in front of you and we're going to present ourselves with the best and the worst parts of, uh, of us in, and hope that uh, we can improve our skills both in communication and leadership. 
Each meeting is uh, prepared by a person called the Toastmaster. And for this evening, Adelina Platon is uh, our host. And I'm going to ask you to wish her a warm welcome on the virtual stage. Adelina. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our monthly English meeting. Tonight, as a host, I prepared for you a journey. A journey where we, you and me we will all find different perspectives regarding so-called unwritten rules. What are they? They form a part of so-called manners, of the logical argument or course of action implied by tacit assumptions. These unwritten rules are different depending on the environment. We have certain rules in society, in a company or organization, but in the same way they exist in our families or group of friends. I encourage you tonight, even you, our guests, to write down in uh, the Zoom ch chat what unwritten rules do you consider very important. That being said, I will proceed. Uh, I will proceed. I, I will uh, present you uh, how uh, this meeting is organized. Uh, our meeting is structured in three main parts. The first part it's uh, the prepared speeches section, where our speakers prepared uh, a speech based on their uh, specific objective from a, a manual or from a pathway. Uh, the second section is the impromptu speeches section or uh, the table topics section where uh, members or guests can um, participate and uh, have an a, a impromptu speech. Uh, and the third section is the section where we uh, get our feedback. It's the evaluation section. And uh, as a co-host tonight, I uh, have uh, the general evaluator, which is Christian Chandru. Uh, he will uh, conduct the uh, evaluation section. And for him and the other speakers from tonight, I uh, ask uh, the, ans the answer uh, of tonight's uh, question. So what unwritten rule do you consider very important? And Christian answered to me, nothing good in life come easy. I will uh, invite Christian Chandru to uh, present uh, to us uh, the, the evaluation section. Thank you, Adelina. Can everyone hear me? Okay. As Adelina mentioned, in the third part of today's evening, we will have the evaluation section. And the evaluation section will be composed of mainly two types of evaluators, the technical evaluators and the speech evaluators. Uh, I will introduce you the technical evaluators um, and let them have a short introduction to tell you more about their role. And I will very briefly um, mention the names of the other three evaluators for the uh, speech evaluators. Uh, Marianne, who will evaluate um, the first speaker of the evening. Um, and then Nausika, uh, who will evaluate the second speaker of the evening. And uh, finally, uh, we will have Rizvan, who will evaluate the third speaker of the evening. Now we are going to go to the first technical evaluator and I chose Bianca to be that one, uh, who is our grammarian. Uh, Bianca, please, uh, before you introduce yourself, let me tell your answer to the question of the evening. What unwritten rule you consider very important? And Bianca's answer to this is, the one of saying please and thank you, even for the little things. It shows a good behavior and appreciation. Bianca, please introduce your role. Thank you, Christian. 
night I want to consider myself the grammar guardian, <laughs> meaning I will listen carefully to all your speeches and I will note your mistakes if it will be any, but also to congratulate you for beautiful expressions that will impress us. Nonetheless, I want to encourage you to use our tonight idiom, break a leg, uh, that means good luck and it's mostly used before an act or a show or a representation. So uh, go out there and break a leg. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Bianca. Now I uh, would like Catalin, our A counter for this evening, to introduce himself and his role and to tell us of what he prepared special uh, specialty that he prepared for us for this evening. Hi everyone. Like we had a guardian for grammar, I am a guardian for fluency. My goal today is to help you improve your fluency in English and to look out for all of the small interruption interruptions that might come up during the speech. Now, since we're online today, I want to try something a bit more interesting. And instead of just giving you a report at the end, I would like to give you some live feedback on all of your small interruptions. And for that, I will count them using a little small deck of playing cards. And whenever I see an unsound or a, or a pause, which might be inappropriate, I will increase the counter and go through them one by one as we go through the speech to give you some live feedback. Now, I didn't start doing this before. I wanted to make sure that you're prepared for this little, little experiment that, is, that, that will be going on. And I hope you will enjoy it. And I would recommend that you don't focus too much on it so you don't get distracted by this little new element in our speeches. I wish you all good luck. And I hope you will have very, very fluent and cursive speeches. Okay. Thank you, Catalin. I'm looking forward to seeing how this one works. And now the final technical evaluator, uh, our timer, Ildi. I invite you in front uh, to tell me your role. And uh, before that, I would like to say Catalin's answer to the question of the evening, which I forgot to mention previously. Uh, Catalin's answer to the question, what unwritten rule you consider very important is always make eye contact when shouting cheers during a toast. And since I'm now asking Ildi to present her role, I would also like to tell you her answer. She said, the law of variation. If you are in traffic and you change lanes, the one you moved from will go faster than the one you are on. Okay, so Ildi, please introduce your role. Hello, everyone. My mission uh, for uh, today is to support you to have a good time management. During a meeting, I will uh, have three colors for you. Green, yellow, and red. For um, uh, spe speakers with um, project prepa prepared projects, general evaluator and uh, grammatician, I have uh, the green color when uh, they have the last two minutes, yellow color when uh, uh, they have one minute, and you, I know, you want to know uh, what happened when is the red color, but no, 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 we will uh, show you later. For the last uh, people with role in this meeting, I will have green color when they have one minute, yellow color when uh, they have 30 seconds, and now for all, I have red color. This color means that our time gone in holiday. See you later and thank you. I will uh, show you my report at the finish. Okay, thank you, Ildi. I, I love the way that you'll be showing the colors for this evening. Um, so before I um, ask Adelina to continue, I would just like to say what I will do uh, at the end of the um, evaluation part. I will make a short overview of 
more or less everything that happened during the session and give my feedback regarding that. So look forward to that towards the end of the session. And let's all break a leg together, I guess. Um, <laughs> not someone's, but uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's break a leg, that's it. Uh, Adelina, I will now ask you to come uh, and continue the session. Before that, please let me give the answer of the uh, of your question. Um, and uh, where did I put that? Sorry. Oops. Uh, there it is. One moment. And Adelina's answer to the question of the evening is treating others with respect, no matter their education or personal beliefs. Please come in front. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. Um, as uh, Christian mentioned, one of my uh, values is respect and uh, what I consider an unwritten rule. Oh my God, Catalina, you're distracting me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here at Toastmaster, we have so-called unwritten rules. They're based on respect, respect uh, for uh, those who are on the stage. Uh, in this case on the virtual stage. And I recommend you to uh, turn uh, the microphones off if you're not a speaker or to keep it that way because the host already put them. And uh, to turn them on only when you, uh, you're about to, to talk. Also, if you want to change the position or to switch the rooms, uh, turn your camera off because it may be distracting for the speakers and uh, they may lose their ideas the way I do when I see the numbers on the cards from Qatar. <laughs> okay, that being said, I will proceed to the first section of this evening, which is the prepared speeches section. And I will uh, start with uh, the first speaker, uh, who is uh, George Blaga, or which, anyway. Uh, he also gave us an answer uh, to uh, tonight's question, and he said, I don't know if it's a rule or just something that comes natural, but I believe it's important when someone is smiling at you, you smile back. George, it's um, on the motiva motivational strategies path at the uh, level uh, number two, project two, understanding your communication style. His speech will be seven minutes, and the title of the speech is Wedding of Words. In a big round of applause, let's wish uh, George Blaga to break a leg <laughs> and welcome on the stage. In the beginning was the word. And the word, after some time, kind of multiplied in every way and everywhere. So today we have a lot of words. I don't know if you know, um, but in average, we use every day around 6,000 words. Uh, some of us use even more words like 12,000 and some of us under 1,000. In this very uh, challenging and interesting project, I learned that there are four types of communications, four types of communication style in uh, which we, uh, which all, uh, all of them we are used by us in different situations or in different way. And all of us has one dominant communication style. My dominant uh, communication style is the highest uh, that the highest score, the highest uh, score that I had is uh, the initi initiative communication style. Uh, this, uh, this particular style has many features, very interesting features and some good sides and some less good sides. And uh, the material that I read are describing the, the type of person, this type of communications like being sociable, being enthusiastic, uh, spontaneous, and uh, fun-loving. And 
yes, I would say that uh, I, I, I have all of that. Maybe some of my friends would disagree with me. I remember uh, four years ago, uh, I've been with some of my, with, with four of my best friends and my dog. And it was a summer day, such uh, an amazing summer day. And we were so bored and I had this brilliant idea. Let's go on a road trip to the mountains. And everybody said, okay. And after just 15 kilometers, our car was broke and we did not know how to repair it. Another brilliant idea of mine was to, to go until the, the nearest uh, village, which at the time I did not know that the nearest village is 30 kilometers away. After an amazing journey with full of uh, sweat and uh, hunger, we finally come back home and I took a selfie in which only two of us uh, smiled, me and my dog. <laughs> uh, you know, this, this way of uh, being or this way of uh, communicating, uh, I think it, is very, uh, it comes for me very natural. And like a very famous architect said once, less is more from the perspective of, uh, initiating type of communicator would sound like uh, speak more and listen less. I unfortunately used to do this uh, many of times. For instance, last year, uh, this very important um, client came to our office and she told me that she wants to build the house of her dreams. And I was like, wow, that is so amazing. Let's do that. And we start talking and, uh, you know, I started to share with her a lot of, a lot of ideas. And after one hour, instead of speaking about her dream house, we end up describing my dream house. But, you know, uh, the client was so happy with, uh, with what I said and uh, uh, our conversation. She, she was, hey, George, okay, let's do this. I'm so excited about it. And, uh, Many of times when, uh, when, when I communicate with people and uh, I, I, think, I think about, uh, I am an initiative type of person, uh, type of communicator, uh, there is always something that holds me back. And uh, uh, somehow at the end of the day, when you go back to your home, uh, after all conversation is over, after all, uh, speaking is, is done after everyone is, is quieting down. All of us will face the most difficult person in our life. Uh, and we will have to have the most important conversation of the day. And maybe, uh, I don't know, you are thinking about your spouse, but uh, actually I am thinking about yourself. Because... Uh, my dad used to tell me uh, one of his favorite saying is uh, life is one long conversation. If you don't learn how to communicate with yourself, you will never really enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, George. And now you, the public, have the opportun opportunity to give a feedback to George. And I will invite you in uh, the Zoom chat section uh, where you can, can write him uh, a feedback in uh, private uh, or public uh, of how you want. And uh, for this, I will ask uh, Ildi to help me to count one minute. And after that, we will go further.
Okay. Now that the uh, feedback uh, time uh, it's gone, uh, let's go to the second speaker of this evening, which is uh, Adrian Salashan. He gave us uh, also an answer to tonight's question, and he said, "I don't know if it's or oh no, I, I'm mindful of the fact that so-called unwritten rules are highly context-dependent and may be very different in different cultures." As a result, I try to understand the context and be flexible instead of getting annoyed when people don't share my rules. Having said that, not pulling out my phone when someone is speaking to me seems like a fairly good rule of thumb. Adrian, it's um, on level three, the demonstration talk from uh, speaking to informal manual. He'll speak, his speech is uh, entitled called your racket it's too light and i will welcome him in a big round of applause how many of you uh, could not wait to get out of the house after this emergency state and the 15th of, of uh, may <laughs> okay most of you uh, I'm assuming that you have different reasons for this. Uh, one of my reasons was I could not wait getting back out on the tennis courts. Uh, recently, after the, the 15th, I got out, obviously, and started playing tennis with, with uh, one of my friends again. And uh, he's actually a former basketball player. He's 1 meter 96-ish tall and some 90, 90 plus kilos and very strong. However, he kept complaining that uh, he, every time he slightly mishit the ball, uh, the racket, his racket was unstable. It was fluttering, it was twisting in his hands, and obviously the, the ball was going and hitting the fence. Uh, so I asked him, what sort of racket does he have? What, what weight does his uh, racket have? And he said it's uh, something like 285 uh, grams, which for reference is a, I don't know, child's weight really. It's, it's a very light racket for, for uh, an adult. Uh, maybe something along the lines of 300 to 320 grams is something that you would expect for an adult. And uh, this, uh, help me move back in time, back when I was starting playing or restarting playing tennis, maybe 15 years ago, when I found myself buying, I had at some point 14 or 15 different tennis rackets because I kept buying new ones and new ones and new ones uh, because of the fact that they were not suitable to me. I, I could not find one that I really liked and that suited my strokes. And, uh, now, with 15 years experience behind me, I know that was a poor choice and a waste of money. Because obviously, one thing is the strokes are more important, the legs usually are more important than the tennis racket. But also because you can actually test various configurations of tennis racket with the same racket. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, why does it matter to have a fairly uh, heavy tennis racket because this the tennis ball is somewhere between 56 and 60 grams of weight of mass now the faster it travels through the air so the more advanced the player the heavier that ball feels and you cannot really break the laws of physics and with a very very uh, light racket redirect efficiently the ball while moving at very fast speed so the point here is that this, a tennis racket, or this, they are identical, by the way, uh, needs to redirect efficiently a, a ball moving fast towards you. And there are three characteristics of a tennis racket, or two, which are important in order to do this efficiently. One is the actual mass. So, like I said, an adult should use something between, I don't know, 295 to 300 grams. 
up to 320 maybe, uh, an amateur. Now professionals use 350, 360 and more maybe tennis rackets because they are really fit, young, strong, and also the ball in professional matches travels much faster than in amateur rackets. So you need more stability in amateur matches. So it, you need more stability. Now the mass is the first uh, thing that matters. The second thing that matters is the balance. Basically, uh, the point of balance of a racket is usually between 32 and 35 centimeters from the bottom to the top. Okay. And the third thing that matters, which is a less uh, obvious, it's the moment of inertia. It's, it's the swing weight of the racket. This means that wh when you actually swing the racket, your perception is that the racket is easier or tougher to swing based on this number, the swing weight. Uh, basically, how much inertia this racket has for, and how much force does it require for you to move from a static position and swing it really fast, okay? So the solution to this uh, problem of having too light a racket or maybe an unsuitable racket and the solution which doesn't cause you to buy 15 different rackets like I did and uh, declare bankruptcy is this. There's an easy solution which is called lead tape, okay? Now, because you cannot really uh, ignore the laws of physics and the mass of the ball is constant, you need to overcome that mass. It is important to find an ideal uh, weight, balance and swing weight for your physical capabilities and level of advanced or less advanced technique. How you can do that is by experimenting, like I said, with lead tape. This thing is very cheap very easy to buy. It's sticky tape. Basically, you, you take this off like this and you can put it anywhere at the top of the racket, at the middle or on the bottom. And this affects all three parameters that I mentioned. Basically, mass, uh, balance and swing weight. And you get to move that uh, any way you like and you get to increase the mass and the inertia of your racket and you get to overcome that ball, which comes with, with uh, lots of speed uh, from your adversary and, and find the ideal for you. Uh, now, you might say, I don't play tennis. I don't care about this. I'm not as passionate about tennis as you. Why should I be interested? And one of the reasons or potential reasons you should be interested is that Tennis is one of the very few sports which uh, you can pick up fairly easily. You can play up to really old ages. And also it is now playable during this pandemic uh, because it's very easy to keep social distancing while playing tennis. After all, the tennis court is quite long. You play with your friends, you can keep uh, your distance, have fun. Uh, keep fit and why not uh, enjoy a new activity for you until you, I don't know, die from old age rather than coronavirus. This is it. Hope it was helpful. Now let's have one minute where you can uh, give uh, feedback to Adi in uh, the chat room.
Okay. Thank you, Ildi. Now uh, let's move to the last but not least prepared speech for this evening, uh, which uh, will shall be presented by uh, Sergio Foca. He answered to us, it's okay to bend the truth to avoid hurting someone's feelings. Uh, Sergio is uh, on the last project uh, from a uh, storytelling manual, which is bringing history to life. His speech is in the, it's called A Man Should Know and will uh, be eight minutes long. Let's welcome in a big round of applause, Sergio Foga. To my friends, I wish suffering, loneliness, sickness, pain, and humiliation. I wish them hate for themselves. I wish them failure and profound self-doubt. I have no pity for them because I wish them the only thing that can prove today, whether they have value or not. And that thing is that they can endure all the things I have mentioned. Now, this is not me being evil or insane, although that can happen from time to time. This is a quote from Friedrich Nietzsche, a man you should know. He was a German philosopher from the 19th century, and many consider him a genius. He wrote about many topics and had brilliant ideas. Tonight, I want to concentrate on just one of those ideas in the hope that it will help you understand the man. I will be talking about the value of suffering. You see, Nietzsche believed that suffering is the only thing that gives value to the world. Without pain and misery, he thought, life would be absurd and worthless. In his view, the person who can endure the greatest suffering is the greatest human being on earth. Have you ever heard of what does not kill you makes you stronger? That's also a quote from Nietzsche. Now, let's see what that truly means. A bodybuilder is the perfect example for this idea. He goes to the gym where he basically suffers, in order to create a good-looking body. He breaks his muscles and, as a result, they grow bigger and stronger. You might also be familiar with the motto, no pain, no gain. That's precisely Nietzsche's idea. And while we're talking about physical suffering, I don't have to remind you how we all came to life. They say giving birth can be extremely painful, but out of it comes the most beautiful thing on the planet, life itself. However, it's important to note that Nietzsche's idea extends well beyond physical suffering. It also applies to heartbreaks, disappointments, failures, feelings of being lost and worthless, humiliation, fear, shame. Nietzsche believed we should welcome all these things into our lives. Even more, he thought we should be grateful for them because they are opportunities for personal growth. Now, I know this sounds crazy at first. Welcome suffering into our lives and even be grateful for it. Yeah, right. But think about it. Did you ever learn something valuable from happiness? While you sat at the beach, drinking a cold one, enjoying the sun, did you learn something about yourself, about your values and your character? Did that party at the club or that charming night out give you any insight into who you truly are or of what you're capable of? I think not. Fun does not improve us. 
Happiness does not make us better, though it makes us happy, sure. It keeps us satisfied and entertained. We're comfortable, we're safe, yet we don't learn anything from it. We don't grow, but we learn and grow from pain and suffering. They are transformative experiences. When we suffer, we struggle, we fight, and ultimately we improve. After each suffering, we become stronger and wiser. We get to know ourselves even more. We learn from our mistakes, we expand our skills, our comfort zone, our limits. We evolve. Suffering is not something we should fear or avoid. Suffering is growth, the real, brutal kind of growth. One that lasts for a lifetime. One that makes us no blood. One that enriches our very soul. If you're not convinced by now, then I can see that you're not. Think for a moment about what movies made the Oscars for best picture. Are they comedies? Action movies? Superhero blockbusters? Romantic ones? Of course not. They are always dramas. Stories that reveal to us the complexity of human character. Tales that show us how hard life can truly be. And despite that, how courageous people learn from their pain and suffering. How they endure it and how they ultimately overcome it. That is a meaningful and a valuable story. Nietzsche believed it would be a terrible mistake to see suffering as a curse when it can actually be a blessing in disguise. This is the gift he wanted us to have, the gift of suffering with its infinite lessons. But what of the man himself? Did Nietzsche suffer throughout his life? Well, when he was just five years old, he lost his father and brother to a brain disease. The only woman he truly loved rejected his proposal to marry her twice. He was never taken seriously by society, not until after his death. He was never healthy and had terrible headaches. And most tragic of all, he lost his mind when he was 44 years old. Historians guess the moment when Nietzsche went mad. They say he was walking in a market, and there he saw a man beating his horse. In that moment, Nietzsche ran to the horse, hugged the animal, and said, I understand. He understood its suffering. He never recovered after that and he died 11 years later. So you can see, this man didn't take the word suffering lightly. On the contrary, he was fully aware of its meaning. Yet, he advised us all on the huge benefits of pain, misery, and hardship in our lives. To conclude, Nietzsche tells us that anything valuable and worthwhile in this life requires suffering. There is no way around it. However, he also tells us that suffering is not a curse, but a blessing in disguise. A blessing filled with lessons that will make you an infinitely better, more compassionate, and stronger human being. Remember that, now that our own lives got tough, and filled with sorrow. Remember also Nietzsche's name, for he is a man you should know. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. And now we will have a minute uh, time to uh, give our feedback to Sergio. 
Also, I want you to I want to remember you that you can also answer to tonight's uh, question uh, in the chat room, which is what unwritten rules you consider very important. I'm eager to find your answers. Okay, thank you, Ildi. Uh, now let's go to the second section of uh, this evening, which is the, the, the impromptu speeches section, which uh, will be guided by uh, uh, a host, a table topics masters, uh, which is Claudio Nemes. He also gave us uh, an answer to tonight's question, and he said, when you get home and wipe your feet at the entries, leave any worries or thoughts related to the activity at work. You're at home and you have a family. Let's welcome in a big round of applause, Claudio Nemes. Hi, my role for this evening is to encourage uh, the participant who don't have an active role to exercise uh, the creativity and to get uh, one uh, speech and also to perform the ability for speaking. Shortly, I prepare eight uh, topics that are, are in line with the theme of this uh, evening. And I will invite the brave speaker volunteer to choose a topic and I will read the topic after that, uh, the topic he chose. He will have 20 seconds for thinking, and after that, two minutes for delivery, the speech. The timer, the timer will choose, will show us the green color after one minute, the yellow color after one minute and 30 seconds, and the red color at two minutes. The speaker can finish his speech in between uh, green and red color. I encourage also the speaker to use the word of uh, the evening. So uh, please uh, drop your uh, name in the chat and you will see who will be the first who can choose the first topic. So I encourage you to, to be brave, yeah. So let's start. Who will be the first one? The first one, what I see, it's uh, one moment. It's Bogdan Nyag. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay, super. Uh, so I choose, uh, choose I uh, the topic word of the one day. to eight. Which one you choose? Uh, one number, sorry. One number for one to eight. First time I have a question, I don't know which is the word of the day or... The word of the day, it's a uh, it's good uh, broken leg. Yeah, I, I... Broken leg, okay. That's, that's uh, good luck, this means. Uh, mm -hmm. I am born in 4th of July, so number four. <laughs> Break a leg, it's, it's uh, the word of the evening. So, uh, which, uh, the, the, tell me one number from one to eight, and I will read the topic. Or four. Four. Number four. So, you are the last man on earth. Are you face in face with the COVID virus 19? 
what unwritten rules, rules do you have to follow in order to survive? I will repeat if you want once again. So, you are the last man on earth. Are you facing to face with the COVID virus 19? What unwritten rules do you have to follow in order to survive? Hello, dear Toastmaster, honored guest. Because I have a broken leg and I am face to face with the coronavirus, I know that I have uh, the mother earth, the mother earth. Uh, bit, uh, around me uh, and I can use a lot of plants or a lot of uh, for the animals to be able to survive this COVID. And uh, I know that mankind will go on and maybe I can find some survivors like in the I am legend and I will try to find Maybe I will have a lab or something like that, like Will Smith, and I will try to find a cure to make us good. And I will give some radio signals, and maybe I will find the colony where the most of the men are living, and I don't know, because all, all of those who were near me have the head died. And I know that I will do all I can to find the cure and to populate the earth again, but with good people and to help others and to be good with ourselves. Thank you. Thanks, Boltan. Uh, really, really nice. Uh, you also use it, the word of the evening and that's great and also good imagination for your story. So let's say the second uh, speaker Please drop your name. I, I didn't see you don't have any courage to to, to speak uh, impromptu to, to take a impromptu speech. Hey, I have another seven uh, topics. Hmm? No, I wrote, I wrote yeah. in the chat. So I didn't saw. Anyway, okay. So please tell me one number from one to eight without uh, four. Seven. Seven. Okay, Ioana, so seven. You are a pet dog. What unwritten rules do you think you should follow for your master to feed you and take you for a walk? So I will repeat once again, if you want. You are a pet dog. What unwritten rules do you think you should follow for your master to feed you and take you for a walk? 20 seconds for thinking and after that, your story. Unwritten rules for a dog. Unwritten rules for cannot be really <laughs> real. Just make some fantasy. Just flow your your world. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned the trick when from Ovidio Oltan when you have no idea what to. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you are a guest on impromptu speech, speak w about what, whatever you want <laughs> and then try to make a connection. And I remembered um, a story. Do you know why they say break a leg? It's a translation uh, and actually it's not used only so for luck. And it's not only used in English, but also in French. But in French, they say merde, 
which means shit. Why is that luck? Because before we had motors and cars to take us to the theater, we had horses and people were used to ride, sorry, carriages. When uh, people were going to the theater in carriages, you know, a play lasts for maybe two hours. Well, the horses had some physiological needs which were dumped on the floor. They measured success before we had motors by the quantity of shit they found in front of the theater after the play was over. If they had a lot of shit, that meant a lot of people were there and saw the play. So my guess is that if I were a dog and uh, I would like my owner to take me for a walk, I would not trample in that shit in order for him not to keep me outside of the house. Thank you. Great, Joanna, thank you. It was really interesting, uh, very nice correlation. And you, you see, you start uh, your speech very well and you finished with a good thinking about that, the dog, yeah. Okay, another subject, so another topic I have here. Please tell your name if you want to perform here in front of us. I didn't hear any, any sound. Me, Adrian Salashan said he wants. Okay, Abby. So uh, a topic from uh, a number from one to eight uh, without four and seven. One. One. Okay, that's great. Uh, you are in, uh, in the forest, a rainforest, with a tribe of cannibals, what unwritten rules do you think you should follow there so you don't get eaten? I will repeat once again. You are in the rainforest with a tribe of cannibals. What unwritten rules do you think you should follow there so you don't get eaten? Hmm, interesting question, Claudio. I think I should, uh, in order not to get eaten, one potential idea, I don't know, is to actually not follow the unwritten rule of washing every day or quite <laughs> often. Uh, potentially, this could help me not get eaten because if you stink from a, from a big distance, hopefully you are not, you're not, um, yummy looking or smelling or enough in order to, to, to be eaten. Now, that's a hope. I don't know any, any members of any rainforest Amazonian tribes, but that's a hope. Now, a second potentially unwritten rule, which, which um, I could uh, get help from, I don't know, it, it's it's uh, the unwritten rule of sharing cul cul culinary traditions. So I will teach them about uh, eating pork, eating uh, various birds, uh, the, the uh, Amazonian forest or the rainforest is very, very rich in uh, all kinds of species. Uh, most of the species on earth as far as I know, animal species are living in the Amazonian forest, in the rainforest. So potentially I could convince them that eating something that is um, more easily, easily obtainable than myself or than a human is, is uh, a better deal. Uh, if this fails as well, hopefully the fact that I play tennis so often uh, helps me with both speed and stamina, and I'm able to run faster than they are, in which case I, I just uh, escape being eaten by simply following the unwritten rule of <laughs> running away when somebody threatens you. I think that's it. Thank you, Adi, a really nice uh, story and uh, nice unwritten uh, rules and also the strategy you can adapt uh, to, to get uh, forward 
for, for the cannibals. Yeah, okay. Let's start with another person. Please let me know which one. Uh, Remus, I think you, you can, can choose to try one topic or Monica. Uh, okay, if I was nominated. Okay. Great, Remus. Uh, so choose please a number between one and eight without uh, four, seven, and one. Mm, without one? One, yes, four, seven. Uh, three. Three. Whew. Yeah. You are on the planet Mars and you are greeted by the extra extraterrestrial reception committee. What unwritten rules do you think you should follow there and why? I will repeat once again. You are on the planet Mars and you are greeted by the extraterrestrial reception committee. What unwritten rules do you think you should follow there and why? Well, I think that the first rule when visiting a new planet and a new species would be to bring gifts. So they would know you come in peace. And since I don't know if they have any cocoa tree on Mars, I would think I would take them chocolate because I'm pretty sure they don't find chocolate that easy on Mars. So I think that that's going to be a start of a very good collaboration. Also, I think it would be really, really important if you would keep the distance, you know, because I don't know what germs and viruses do they have and what germs and viruses do I have and can be little for them. So all this social distancing between species, I think it's also very, very important. But once um, we move past this and can find someone to translate what we're saying, I think it's gonna be a very, very fruitful collaboration. They could give us the stealth technology that they're using until now, so we are not able to see them. And we can give them chocolate. Of course, chocolate is it's the best thing on earth. Thank you. Thank you, Remus. Thank you for your uh, story and for your imagination, and also for your chocolate and also to keep distance between uh, the, ex the Martian, or I don't know how it's called it, this, uh, let's say, people. Okay, another, another person who want to come on stage can be Monica, please. Okay, Monica. let's try, but please, I want a, an easy one. <laughs> So you, you, so sorry, I, I didn't heard you well. Yes, so I said I will try, but I uh -huh. want an easy one and not such a hard one. Okay, everyone it is very easy. So Monica, please choose one number from one to eight without uh, one, three, four, and seven. Five. Five. So you are a working bee. What unwritten rules do you think you should follow so that the bee queen doesn't kick you out of their house and why? So I will repeat once again, you are a working bee. What unwritten rules do you think you should follow so that the bee queens doesn't kick you out of the house, and why? Yes, so first of all, I think that it's uh, very important to work very hard, and not to be a lazy one, and to do the courses that you have to do there, so that uh, your queen is always happy with you, 
and maybe you also have to do some extra working there so you can be noticed and uh, everybody will be happy with you um i really do not know uh, a lot of things about him i really am out of this tema but um do it just like generally yeah this is my opinion to do extra work so that's all thank you thank you very much monica it was really also my thoughts about that uh, and uh, you you are in the same level the same uh, vibration with me so uh, uh let's see Adelina, please tell me if I can take another one or you can finish here. Yes, we are on time. You are in time. So you have another topics, uh, please. Uh, so who can, who wants to get in German? Okay, Florine. Nice to hear you. Please, uh, Florine. Choose a number between uh, one and eight without one, three, four, five, and seven. Eight. Sorry? Eight. Eight. Okay. So, seems to be a good person, uh, character for you. You are a Neptune, the king of the seas. What unwritten rule did you promote for ocean fish and why? So I repeat once again, you are a Neptune, the king of the seas. What unwritten rules did you promote for ocean fish and uh, fishes and why? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So as a king, Starting today, no ships, no plastic, no person in, uh, in the sea. Uh, if anybody, any person at all, will be seen in the sea, will be eaten as a prize. So the, the sharks that are eating the most uh, people are uh, we, they will uh, have a prize. Um, also, the seahorses, they are eating some, I don't know, some small people. Why not? They will also get a prize. So, actually, it will be a totally war against human. And um, so, what, what, uh, what was nice to see you and hear about you, but uh, 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 starting immediately, you are extinct. So, sorry, uh, nothing against you, but you are a nice guy, so, but uh, 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 we need to go uh, with 100% of our um, ideas in order to survive. Thank you. Thank you, Florin, for your uh, topics, for, for your uh, story. And really nice, uh, nice to be really a king of the seas. And w it was really interesting what you do. Okay, uh, Adelina, you can stop or... Okay, uh, so I will invite you to choose uh, the person who to vote the speech you like the most. So you can uh, find the polls and uh, please choose your wishes. So I will want to say something. Uh, the winner will receive from my side 41 books in PDF format. It's from the Humanitas Publishing House and I will give you 41 books in PDF for the winner of these topics. Okay, thank you. And now uh, 
come back to Adelina, the Toastmaster of this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Claudio. I think I chose the wrong uh, role for tonight. <laughs> I was really... I, I saw the prize. <laughs> Very uh, nice section. Congratulations, uh, Claudio, and thank you for all the subjects. Um, before uh, proceeding to uh, the third section of this evening, I want to thank uh, to our guests who responded to uh, my tonight's question. Uh, the first uh, guest is Bogdan. He uh, mentioned as, uh, as an unwritten rule uh, to have empathy for other people and to help others that cannot help themselves. Thank you, Bogdan. And the second guest who answered to us uh, is Adina. She said, an unwritten rule that is important for me is not to assume that all the humans in a meeting know an unwritten rule by default without being explained explicit. <laughs> so thank you, uh, Adina, uh, for uh, your answer. And I will uh, now invite uh, our general evaluator, Chris Pishandru, to uh, lead us to uh, the evaluation section. Let's welcome him. Thank you. After we have heard the uh, three speakers with prepared speeches, we will now, and after going through the table topics section as well, we will now uh, listen to what our speech evaluators have to say uh, in regards to the feedback that they want to give to the ones who've prepared their speeches. And we will start with the first speech evaluator, Marianne Punzadiu, who will be evaluating um, George's speech. Before I let Marianne offer his feedback to George, I will tell you his answer to the question of the evening. What unwritten rule you consider very important? Marianne's answer, my rule that I use in sport at my job and in my personal life is stop, look, and go. Stop, how am I now? Look, what is my objective? Go, what is my process? Marianne, please offer your feedback. Thank you, Christy. Life, it is a long journey of communication. If you understand your inner communication, if you understand how to communicate yourself, and with this code, you you touch me, Georgie, and you touch my heart. So it was very lovely. And I want to present my evaluation like it is a journey. And I will start with the first part, with the good stuff. The good stuff, it is, uh, uh, it is created by three elements. The first element is the structure. I love that you had the introduction with a lot of information about the words, communication style, and also about your communication style. And on the second layer, you had the, your personal story about the journey in the mountains and the client. And you had a small conclusion with your father quote that I love it. The second element that I like it, it was your fluid transition. You had a nice transition, a transition between introduction, your stories, and the conclusion. On the last element that I love, it was the, that you use your personal story and in this way you touch ourselves with your style, with your communication style. In the second part of your journey, for what you want to, what you, it would be nice to improve, it, it, I would recommend you to, to have a small conclusion for each story. And this way you can 
you can uh, make more impact on what do you want to 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 know to to send information from uh, from the audience to to have a small conclusion for each per story if you have a multiple story but the second element that you can improve is uh, or to uh, to pay attention is is if you give some examples like uh, uh, the four elements of communication about uh, direct uh, initiative uh, analytical and uh, supportive it will be nice to have a small information for each communication style and in this way we can know better how it is your communication style different and the last element that i recommend you is to have a stable camera at least during your speech you, you had an instable camera and i i was not very it was very hard for me to to communicate with me and i recommend you to have a a support for your phone for your laptop or improvise your support i will send you a photo with my support after the meeting to see how it is my support stand for the for the laptop. Thank you, and thank you that you break the lack of communication. Okay, thank you, Marianne, for your feedback. Now we will continue with the second evaluator, now Sika Petrescu, who will be offering her feedback uh, for Adrian's speech. Now, Sika's answer to the question of the evening is very on theme. Don't break a leg if you're not supposed to. Good, uh, a good uh, thought for any of us to keep in mind. Now, Sika, please present your feedback. Hello, everyone. Uh, I never, I never thought about giving Tennis a chance, but maybe now I will. This evening, Adrian explained us how you can use a sticky band to improve the efficiency of a tennis racket. He also tried to make this topic relevant for us by um, telling us the advantages of playing tennis. And I think he succeeded at least to gain our interest in, the, in this uh, game he played. Abby, I am going to uh, tell you what I liked about your speech and also what I think you could improve. Ah, okay. I appreciate the fact that you dressed in a sports outfit. I noticed that. And that you used two tennis rackets to help the demonstration and the explanation of uh, the process. I also like the fact that you, you use another topic other than Toastmasters for a speech. And um, you shared with us some personal information about a friend of yours and about you also. Uh, both those things, I think they helped you connect better with us and uh, as an audience and you, you, gain, you gained our interest. I think, though, every speech has room for improvement, so here's my suggestion. I think when, when delivering a speech, you should be standing up, even though I didn't do that. I think it helps to, uh, I think it, it would have helped you explain better and it would have shown that you are involved in this explanation, it would have shown a, a bigger effort for explaining to us about the topic. I, I felt that you were a little bit laid back on the chair and uh, it would have helped me um, if I would have seen you standing up. So to conclude, I like the topic you chose the sports outfit and the two tennis rackets you use. 
And I suggest I suggest you stand up when delivering a speech if you have room in your setting. And um, see you on the Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nausika, as well. Yes, thank you, thank you. Now we move on to the final speech evaluator, the third one, Razvan Farkash, who will be offering his feedback to, um, I'm sorry, uh, to Sergio's uh, speech. Before that, I will tell you what Razvan answered. The moment I find his, there we go. Razvan's answer to the question of the evening is short and simple. He said, as you sow, so shall you reap. And not as in R-I-P, but as in R-E-A-P, like in agriculture. Razvan, please present your feedback. Suffer, struggle, improve. Honestly, I hope that you will not suffer from my feedback, but improve and get better from it. Now, what comes next are two elements that I really, really enjoyed about your speech and two elements that I think you can get better next time. Let's begin. The first element that I really enjoyed about your speech was your voice. You have a really warm storytelling voice. And I really love the way you, vo you used your volume throughout the speech, your vocal variety, and most importantly, your pauses. At some point, you even told us, think about it, and you actually let us think about it. I think you're one of the few speakers I have saw that did that with the public. Now, the second element I have liked about your speech was the body language. Even though you were sitting on a chair, I think it was great because every word that you had was accompanied by a gesture of your hands. Now, I don't really recommend this, but uh, next time when you have a storytelling project like this, I think it suits you that you sit on the chair and make full use of your voice. Two things that you can improve to your speech. Well, first of all, I think the structure because you started with the description and I thought this will be the setting for the story, but it wasn't. And I really didn't get a clear structure after the first introdu the introduction, right after the quote. So I feel like you set us up with the suffering and you didn't climax. Next time, I recommend that you have a more detailed conclusion for example, uh, maybe mm, you can use a um, repetitive phrase that you use throughout your speech and you end your speech with a bam. Or you can have the detailed conclusion, like maybe explain a bit more about the uh, message of your speech. The second element I, um, I think you can improve was the camera angle, because at times I felt like your hands were going out of the screen and coming back. And it would be a shame with all that great body language to miss bits of it just because your camera isn't set right. Like Before a meeting, I suggest you come in front of the camera, you turn it on and see at what point it is the best for your hands to be shown on the camera. To sum up, you had a great voice, you had a great body language, and now to improve the structure of your speech and the positioning of your camera. Thank you for the speech and break a leg for the next speech. Okay, thank you, Rizvan, for your evaluation. Now that we have received all three feedbacks from the speech evaluators, we will be hearing from the technical evaluators who will tell us how each of us did in the respective field. Um, we'll start with 
give me a quick second to see the grammarian, that is Bianca. And Bianca answered for the question of the evening. You said um, it. Actually, I've said it at the beginning. Yep, I've just noticed that now, sorry. Bianca, please go ahead and give us your report. Hello again. Um, I'm. Uh, wait. Ah, okay, my mic is having some troubles. I don't know why. Sorry. Okay. Um, your guardian is here, and uh, I will start with Joanna. Uh, Joanna, you had a good grammar both in Romanian and English. And uh, thank you for explaining tonight's idiom at Impromptu. Adelina, I really love uh, your uh, expression, feedback time is gone, because it was a nice inversion, and also so-called unwritten rules that are based on respect. Very nice. Uh, I heard that you said you and me, it's... Uh, you and I, because they are both subjective pronouns. And uh, you had, you said, uh, have a impromptu, the correct form is an. Uh, present to us, it's okay to say it, to present uh, uh, Okay. Uh, you also had a, a question about which and who, and which is for things and who is for people. Your uh, gut was right the first time. Uh, Christian, uh, thank you for uh, having um, almost perfectly grammar. You said at one point that they uh, want to give it give. Okay, uh, and thank you for uh, using the expression, break a leg, but uh, I uh, appreciated the expression live feedback, and uh, you had a perfect grammar. Uh, Ildi, I appreciate uh, the expression, no, no, I will tell that later, it was really funny and nice. And uh, you said at one point when they have less two minutes, when they, maybe you should replace that with the remaining two minutes. And uh, you said our time is gone in holiday. Maybe our time has gone or went on holiday. Dorje, I loved your quote, less is more. Uh, the use of the phrasal verb hold me back and uh, I enjoyed the most the expression all of us will face the most difficult person in our life yourself. I think it's brilliant and very profound. Uh, you said at some point, actually you said it twice, many of times, it's only many times, and uh, you also said after one hour we end up, maybe you should have used we ended up because you were referring to the test. Adrian, uh, I really appreciate your, appreciate your uh, uh, expression. You cannot really break the laws of physics and uh, declare bankruptcy, but also in the end when uh, you encouraged us to uh, play tennis, it is uh, playable during this pandemic. And uh, you said at some point his racket have, uh, you should have used has, and um, you said uh, unsuitable, maybe un unsuitable. Um, okay. Sergio, uh, the first enumeration, it was unexpected and impressive. I uh, really appreciated your quotes and uh, how you uh, 
uh, described the value of suffering. And uh, also you have a nice accent that is enjoying. Uh, you said happen from time to time. You should have said happens. And uh, you said ultimately overcome. In that context, maybe overcame because you were referring to the past. Would you? I uh, really appreciate the expression flow your word. And uh, you said at some point, exercise their creativity, it's their creativity. Uh, after one minute, it just, it's just a minute. And uh, you uh, used the past tense uh, wrong twice. You said, uh, I didn't saw and didn't heard. It's just didn't see and didn't hear. Um, Marianne, I really appreciate the, the good stuff and uh, the fact that you used uh, tonight's idiom. You said on the last element, without on, it's just the last. You said unstable, uh, unstable it's on. Um, Osika, you uh, said uh, gain our interest, a nice phrasal verb. I didn't hear any uh, mistakes. And, uh, and Razvan, I uh, appreciated your introduction joke. Uh, you didn't climax and uh, the fact that you used uh, tonight's word. And uh, you said most importantly, I think that it's just most important. Thank you all for hearing me. Okay, thank you, Bianca, for your report. And now we will listen to our counters report, Catalin Balan. Catalin, uh, when you're ready, please deliver your report. Thank you very much, Christy. I hope you enjoyed the live feedback so far, and I'm here with my report. Uh, Jana, as president, I counted 25 uh, small pauses. Adelina, as Toastmaster, I ran out of cards at some point. Sometimes that happens. Uh, Toastmasters Claudio as well, I ran out of cards. You tend to introduce small breaks between words. Be careful of that. Um, the first speaker, Ma uh, Georgia, I ran out of cards. Uh, again, Georgia, you tend to repeat words a lot when you're thinking, looking for ideas. Adrian, I ran out of cards. By the way, I have 40 cards in my deck. So uh, if, if it's past 40, I don't have an actual number. Uh, uh, Adrian, I'd like to mention that you tend to repeat words a lot when you're looking for ideas with, with, and you say it right after that. Not just saying an, oh, you also repeat the previous word quite a lot. I counted at least 15 of those scenarios. Sergio, I did not find any inappropriate pauses. I wanted strictly to look for really, really small mistakes, but all of those could have been just caused by poor connection, so I found nothing. As, evalu as speech evaluators, uh, Marianne, I found 19 pauses. More specifically, you tend to prolong words like the, and that tends to turn into an uh, and I wasn't really sure how to count those. Be careful how you end your words in an um, especially in English. Uh, now, Sika, I found uh, 13 pauses for you. Once you, you took really long until you started going into them, until you ran into your first um sound, after that you started to get them a little bit more frequently. So be careful how, how you structure, how how, be careful for your fluency, not just at the beginning of the speech. And Rosvani only found five pauses for you. As a grammarian, Bianca, careful for the word and, because you tend to go and a uh, a lot. I ran out of cards. Ildi, as a timer during her presentation, I ran into 10 inappropriate sounds. And as a general evaluator, Christy, I ran out of cards as well. For the impromptu speakers, Bogdan, I counted 11. Yon, I counted nine. Adi, I counted just 15. Remus, I had four. Monica, I had three. And Florine, I had 10 sounds, which I found inappropriate. Thank you very much for your report. Listen. Okay, thank you, Katalin, for your report. And now we move on to our timer. We'll deliver her report, Hildi. Hi, everyone. 
You see my green, yellow and red eyes on this evening. Big, big, big congratulations for George Blaga, Nausica Petrescu, Bogdan Neak, Ioana Neksha, Remus Tedorici, Monica and Florin Tiperciuk. Guys, you have a great time management. Time for the rest of uh, speakers went on holiday. But I have a great, great uh, chance for you to come to practice next week, uh, next uh, meeting here on the stage. Thank you very much. I'm on time. Ah, just a second. Our president, uh, Joanna Neksha, um, open on time this meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ildi, for your report. Now I will uh, deliver my report and then pass on uh, the torch to Adelina to uh, end the session. I would like to, I, I have a lot of notes scattered around here, so I like to make sense of them. Uh, we have started with one minute after seven, but depending on how we've counted that, it could have been on time, so it's okay, my book. Um, we had a funny start in Romanian, <laughs> um, which was uh, very quickly corrected, course corrected. Um, I like that you want to address uh, the visitors that we have for this session. Um, congratulations for that. She also uh, stated the club's mission. And um, she also asked the visitors to introduce themselves and to um, have a very short uh, introduction. Um, Okay, so uh, in my book, Ioana did her part as the president, uh, 10 out of 10. Moving forward, Adelina introduced um, the theme of the evening and uh, had a very short and nice introduction into, uh, for, for all of us into her uh, theme. And uh, she encouraged all of us to offer feedback. Then she presented the structure of the meeting Uh, she also was uh, careful to let us know to keep our microphones on mute when we were not speaking, so as not to uh, be a disturbance for the one speaking. And uh, she was paying attention after every speaker to make sure that we all took a minute of break and offer us our feedback to the uh, speakers. And I've also liked her transitions between the speakers and the way that she presented herself throughout the uh, session. Then, I'll go with the technical evaluators. I, uh, Bianca, our grammarian, I've uh, appreciated the fact that you were very attentive to what we said. Uh, that was very evident from your report and from the how, how detailed it was. Uh, one small thing here is that maybe it would have been cut just a bit short because you were a bit out of time. However, I do appreciate that you were very attentive to what everybody said. I also like that you congratulated those that used the word or uh, expression of the evening, as you put it. Um, you did keep on time when you've introduced the role, so congratulations to that. And um, I like that you were also when you've mentioned something, you also stated why you would think that that would be a good suggestion for those that you've offered it. Uh, I'll counter, Catalin. Um, where did I put? There we go. So very in time, um, as, um, uh, sorry, uh, you, were, you were on time, both with your introduction and with your report. Uh, your detailed, your report was also very detailed, which I appreciated, and I also like the way that you've kept track of our um, us and unpleasant sounds. Very nice. I would like to see this more often from now on, at least personally. Um, and also I like that you offered a reason when you've told someone a suggestion why you think that would be a good thing to keep in mind. Timer, uh, Ildi. I like the way that you've used the 
uh, nail polish colors to show the time. Um, I also like that you were very on point with your introduction and with your report, probably the most on point out of all of us. And you've also um, had a good spirit, um, which is always something that I enjoy, especially uh, for the timer who probably has the most straightforward reports to deliver out of all the uh, technical evaluators. And now uh, very quickly and briefly, um, moving on to the speech evaluators, uh, Marianne. So general for all three speech evaluators, I noted and enjoyed the fact that you've told what you were going to say, you said it, and then you said again what you just said. That was always a good thing to do and uh, shows that you've structured your speech and your evaluation. Um, also, you have all offered good suggestions and you have explained why you offered those suggestions and they were addressed towards the speaker's pres uh, presentation and not so much as the person that delivered the speech, which is always appreciated. Um, mention here that uh, Marianne and uh, Rezvan uh, went a bit out of time. So pay attention to that uh, next time. Maybe try to condense your ideas just a bit. And also a thing that I want to mention for everyone is that you didn't necessarily address the objective of the speech. So that is something that maybe you could introduce your evaluation with and then continue with the rest of your uh, report or sorry, feedback. Um, and general remarks, and I'm going to end with this. I've noticed just a very few small minor things during uh, George's presentation. Um, Adi wrote something in the public chat, which was not really very disturbing, uh, or maybe disturbing is not the correct word, but it's, if you want to say something to someone, address it privately. It just shows a bit more respect towards the speaker. And same goes for uh, Ioana, our president during Adi's speech. Um, and I also want to uh, congratulate Remus for accepting Catalin's nomination for the impromptu speeches. That's uh, a good gesture, a good attitude. I like that. And I want to congratulate Claudio for his absolutely, like, I don't know where you came out with those uh, ideas, but I absolutely love them. And I'm, I'm so happy that uh, you had time to present six out of the eight ones that you have prepared. So thank you very much for that. Um, I think that's going to be my report. Sorry for taking so long. And uh, I will now ask Adelina to continue with uh, the remaining of the session. Thank you, uh, Christy, for uh, all the value you brought to us by uh, your uh, section. Uh, now I want to bring a so-called conclusion to all these unwritten rules you shared with us, uh, the speakers and uh, the guests. Well, one uh, important thing uh, about uh, these unwritten rules, and, and as uh, Adina outlined, uh, it's very important to mention them, to explain them without assuming other uh, people uh, know them. So uh, here at Toastmasters, uh, if you didn't know by now, uh, we, we are ready to learn and to practice our communication. So <laughs> if you have unwritten rules, you have to learn how to present them better. Without uh, going uh, long with words, I will now uh, present uh, uh, the winner from the impromptu section, which is da -da 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 -da! Florine. <laughs> Congratulations, Florine. I have two questions for you as a winner. <laughs> Uh, I want uh, first to ask you, how did you feel on uh, stage? What? Very, not with all my thoughts in my head. 
after I finished it, I uh, had uh, some more ideas. What can I do to humans? But uh, uh, now nah, some other time. Okay, thank you. And the second section, the second question. Sorry, uh, what? Uh, you want to tell to those who may wanted to uh, join this role, but they didn't? Just jump in. It's not an easy way to do this. And uh, to, to see some other time or to expect some easy topics will uh, never happen. So just jump in is... Uh, it's uh, not so uh, hard that it seems. Okay, thank you, Florine. Congratulations thank again. <laughs> Congratulations for the whole collection of books. <laughs> I am the you already. <laughs> and that being said, I want to thank you all for uh, this evening. And uh, I will uh, give the word back to our president to end this meeting. Thank you. Iwana. Thank you very much, Adelina. As usual, I'm gonna kindly ask you to take your microphones off for just two seconds and give Adelina and Christy a real round of applause for organizing this evening. As hard as it, as it was to get uh, used to a room full of people applauding, now I miss it. And it's one of the things I miss the most, the energy from, from the room. How did you feel today? How was it for you? Can I switch go back to Romanian? <laughs> no, Sika says no. People the rest of people are saying, yes, Catalin is let's, decided. Uh, let's put it up to a poll. <laughs> sure. Uh, let's. Thumbs, thumbs up or thumbs down for a Romanian. There is no thumbs down reaction. Roman you can turn on your camera. Thumbs up. Ah, look, clapping could be... A thumbs down. I am seeing more thumbs up than, uh, yeah. Uh, bine, trecem, trecem înapoi în uh, română. Spuneți-mi uh, cum a fost seara pentru voi, poate ne dați un feedback, uh, ne spuneți la ce v-ați așteptat și cum a fost de fapt. Bogdan? Te rog. Seara, uh, o să încep cu ceea ce mi-a plăcut. Te rog. Mi-a plăcut foarte mult introducerea pe care ai făcut-o, Ioana. Mi-a plăcut de la Grumeria, încă a spus că vrea să capteze toate expresiile frumoase. A spus Claudiu la un moment dat că cuvint, cuvântul zile, dar n-am înțeles cine exact a zis cuvântul zile. Picior de rup sau ceva de ce? Este, este treaba gramaticianului, aceea de a ne îmbogăți vocabularul și atunci învățăm cuvinte sau expresii pe care încercăm să le folosim în timpul ședinței. Și breaking a leg e în engleză o expresie destul de uzuală, de urat noroc. Aha. Și la noi avem, dar la final ea zice, el a folosit de atâtea ori, el de atâtea ori și nu. No. Aha, ok. Așa. După aia mi-a plăcut foarte mult uh, cum Cristi uh, a prezentat că evaluatorul, timerul și gramaticianul. Noi avem numai gen, uh, evaluator general și evaluator pentru fiecare discurs. Nu mai interesant. Uh -huh. uh, mi-a plăcut că îmi place că fiecare aveți scris în față la nume fiecare ce îi și așa poți să-ți dai seama ce fiecare ce rol are și așa. Mi-a plăcut foarte mult că ați avut, după o pus Cristi, care câștigă premiul și așa. 
Au trebuit să alegem acolo, s-a fost foarte tare și și că și niște cărți astea și mai bine, bravo, Claudiu, și mi-au plăcut poveștile lui, adică întrebările de grază. Mm-hmm. Așa. Uh. spune ne o sugestie de îmbunătățire. Acum. La noi, la început, punem de share screen toastmaster sau președintele, mm-hmm. ceea ce se va desfășura în ziua respectivă, și primul A, Cu agenda. Cu agenda, da. Și așa poate să vadă și invitații despre ce e vorba, când va fi și cum va fi. Mm-hmm. Ok. Cred că e foarte important să ne vedem, să fie toată lumea camera deschisă, că noi și de altă conexiune și consider mm-hmm. că e mai bine să ai pe toată lumea, părerea mea. Mm-hmm. Noi avem o pauză după discursurile de improvizație, 5 minute, poate vrea cineva să meargă la baie sau să-și ia un parc cu apă. Noi de obicei ne luăm parc cu vin sau un șoat sau ceva după ce se termină totul, mai stăm care vrea da. și ceva și mai râdem și în alta. Și noi ce mai avem uh, e 10 second speech ca table topics, dar așa toată lumea trebuie să zică ceva pentru 10 secunde. Și e foarte comic, știi, că în 10 secunde n-a pus să zici multe și zici tot felul de prostii și ia să ceva fain, știi, până la urmă. Asta în partea de socializare? Nu, la final, după la care final. evaluare, avem 10 second speech. Cineva cum... Okay. Audio, table topics, și cineva își pune întrebări sau fel și fel. Deci, ești într-o mm-hmm. cușcă și faci ceva, după aia continuă la altă, continuă la și tot felul de nebunici. Da. Plăcut. Da, e ceva interesant. Și cam mi-a făcut plăcere să fiu aici, am simțit bine și am luat și eu unele idei care le putem, le pot zice celor de la mine în club și. Mă bucur că corona și că am putut să, adică nu, mă, că iau ei sau nu, dacă putem să o mutat pe online și putem avea oportunitatea să... Ne-a forțat corona. Am mesajul, dis- mesajul discursului lui Sergiu atunci, <laughs> dacă se bucură de corona. <laughs> ei, da. nu, are și părți bune și nu, și părți rele. Acum nu ne putem gândi mă la negativ, că altfel n-am mai ajunge nicăieri. Ne-a forțat uh, corona să sărim în secolul 21 <laughs> și să folosim online-ul. Mie mi-a prins Mai mult. în perioada asta, că am învățat multe, am participat la multe mm-hmm. cursuri și la multe toți m-am uh-huh. Mulțumim foarte frumos, Bogdan, de sugestii și ne bucurăm că te-am avut alături în seara asta. Te mai așteptăm noi în fiecare marți ne întâlnim cu excepția ultimei marți din lună, ședințele sunt în limba română, iar ultima marți din lună, după cum ai văzut în engleză, e prima ședință în care nu facem pauză. <laughs> Testăm și noi, pentru că, pentru că la fel am călătorit în alte cluburi și um, da, am mai împrumutat, furat uh, idei și testăm acum tot felul de lucruri. Mulțumesc foarte frumos, Bogdan, pentru feedback. Te mai așteptăm la noi. Mulțumesc. Mai ai cineva care vrea să ne dea un feedback? Poți foarte sc- Înainte, nu mă foarte scurt, vreau să menționez. Credit where credit is due, Cătălin a adus votul pentru improvizate. <laughs> Mulțumim. El e Zoom masterul. Bun, atât. Sergiu, te rog. Am observat două lucruri pe care le faceți și noi nu le facem și chiar mi-au plăcut. Primul e că votați un câștigător la secțiunea de table topics. Chiar mi se pare că un gram de competiție o poate îmbunătăți și adaugă o altă latură a secțiunii în sine. Asta chiar aș propune să încercăm măcar de test. Îmi place foarte mult, mai ales că am fost din perspectiva unui vorbitor în seara asta, feedback-ul oferit de toată lumea. Chiar e foarte util să-ți filtrez discursul prin perspectivele a zeci de oameni, nu doar un singur evaluator și cu ocazia asta vreau să vă mulțumesc tuturor care mi-ați scris. Sunt de pe telefon și am aflat că e aproape imposibil să scriu pe ce dacă intru pe telefon. Deci nu recomand absolut nimănui. <laughs> și două sugestii de îmbunătățire la evaluatorii de discursuri. Noi tot timpul spunem obiectivele unui discurs sau obiectivele unui proiect ca mai apoi invitații să poată urmări oarecum 
prin ce filtre a trecut evaluatorul discursul și vorbitorul. Asta mi se pare tot timpul foarte util. Și alți colegi, pentru că ești interesat să vezi ce obiective are un anumit proiect, vei ajunge și tu la rândul tău la el și poate te ajută. Și doi, asta mai mult pentru numărătorul de ori din această seară, oarecum un unwritten rule la noi în club ar fi că cine are peste 5 ori spune mereu mai multe ori. Nu 40 de ori sau așa, mi se pare că le zon vorbitorul printr-o cantitate imensă care îl poate copleși. Cam asta ar fi. Foarte interesantă ședința. A, ah, și tema. Mi se pare că foarte bine implicând toți membrii din ședință. Și noi mai avem ședințe tematice, dar oarecum Toastmaster-ul se strofacă să-i ofere o întreagă poveste, dar nu implică neapărat ceilalți membri, pentru că nu avem cultura asta. Și asta am putea împlinita. Pe total, foarte interesantă și creativă ședință. Mulțumim frumos, ne bucurăm că te-am avut alături și sper să, să mai vii. Sigur. Mulțumesc! Mai e cineva care ar vrea să ne dea un feedback? Așa, repede, repede. Eu vreau să dau repede, repede un feedback. Te rog. Mi-a plăcut uh, foarte mult uh, secțiunea de table topics și subiectele pe care le-a ales Claudiu în seara aceasta. Mm-hmm. Și uh, îi zic mult succes în continuare să aleagă tot subiectul din ăștia așa super tare. Cam mm-hmm. atât. Mersi. Mulțumim foarte frumos, Monica. Te mai așteptăm alături de noi. Bine. Uh, trec la secțiunea de... Um, anunțuri administrative și aici am două. Ovidiu Oltean va livra pentru noi un workshop de evaluări pe data de 5 iunie și am să îl rog foarte frumos să ne dea câteva detalii despre inițiativa lui. Ovidiu? Mulțumesc, Ioana! Trainingul va avea loc pe 5 iunie între ora 7 și 9 seara. Este un training prin care dorim să creștem puțin calitatea evaluărilor noastre, să fie mai la obiect, să fie mai uh, obiective, nu doar la, la obiect, să încercăm să le împachetăm astfel de încât să transmitem lucruri valoroase fără să legăm uh, omul în sine. Uh-huh. Și va fi, chiar dacă este online, ne-a fi plăcut mare mult să le, uh, foarte mult să le întâlnim față în față, chiar dacă va fi online, uh, sunt convins că voi beneficia din plin de suportul lui Cătălin, pentru a ne împărți în camere, uh, pentru că vom face exerciții în echipe. Uh, este chiar, deci chiar este training. Uh, vor fi uh, speaker care vor ține discursuri, uh, vom primi niște bune practici pe care ulterior le vom aplica pentru a oferi evaluări discursurilor respective. Și aici am nevoie puțin de sprijinul vostru. În ce sens? Uh, eu îmi doresc să creăm trei grupe în care să putem să exersăm și am nevoie de trei speaker, trei persoane care vor putea să țină un discurs între 5 și 7 minute, care vor primi feedback de la mai multe persoane, pentru că nu va fi un singur evaluator, vor fi mai mulți evaluatori. Și mai mult decât atât, pot să primească acel feedback chiar pentru un proiect din trație. Adică poate să fie considerat o evaluare de discurs și astfel să progresați mai departe cu un discurs, dar în cadrul unui training. Adrian, vrei să ții discurs? Ok. Am să vă pun aici în chat. Eu deja am făcut un formular de înscriere, pentru că am nevoie să știu cum anume fac grupele de exercițiu. Hai să îl găsesc ca să vă trimit link către el. Hai. Și vă pun în chat. iunie, între ora 19 și 21. Cred că, da, am scris aici. Deci e un formular Google în care dacă vreți să țineți discurs, vă rog să vi faci că vreți să țineți discurs, avem trei locuri disponibile uh, și dacă vreți și evaluare pentru proiect. Ulterior o să vă împart în camere diferite pentru că avem oameni care ne urmăresc din alte orașe, pot să participe și alți participanți din alte cluburi, uh, fiind vorba de un training uh, online, uh, au și alții acces. Vă încurajez cu drag să, mm-hmm. să participați la, la trainingul acesta. Este pentru voi, astfel încât să puteți crește în calitatea uh, evaluărilor. Vă rog să vă înscrieți, pentru că am nevoie să știu cum anume fac grupele. Deci chiar dacă sunteți speaker, chiar dacă sunteți doar participanți, vă înscrieți 
pe doar nume și ce rol vreți să aveți ca să pot să organizez cât mai bine trei. Uh-huh. Ovidiu, uh, de cât uh, sau cu cât participanți vezi uh, eficient trainingul ăsta? Ai spus trei grupe, asta ar însemna câte cinci oameni într-o grupă, deci da, undeva la cinci. Hai să mergem la cinci, șase oameni pe grupă, deci până în 18, 21 de participanți putem merge să facem. Uh-huh. Ok. Și ai spus că nu e limitat doar pentru toți Master Cluj, poate fi și pentru colegi din afară, deci colegii care sunt uh, invitați de la Timișoara, Germania, dacă vor să mai vină cu ceva de mână, pot. Da. Uh, metaforic, de mână, păstrați distanța socială. Da. <laughs> Bine. Uh, mi-am amintit acum un aspect care s-ar putea să fie important și anume proiectul la care eu mă gândeam E ultimul proiect pe care vreau să-l țin din manualul de persuasive speaking. E un proiect mai specific, durează între 10 și 14 minute și e cu dialog și cu povești. S-ar putea să nu fie foarte potrivit pentru un workshop de evaluare și așa că poate că a, într-o ședință a, 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 normală. Un discurs pe care să primești evaluare, care să nu poate... Da, un alt discurs, da, mă gândesc la asta. Putem face, dar da, proiectul, că... proiectul meu nu prea se pretează. Da, cred că sunt proiecte pe Pathway sau din manualele vechi care nu se pretează la, la trainingul ăsta, pentru că ori sunt foarte lungi, ori au niște obiective foarte ciudate. Dacă simțiți că e un discurs pur și simplu uh, nespecial în vreun da. fel, între 5 și 7 minute, puteți să primiți și evaluare pe el. Dacă nu... Ok. Pot, can... pot să țin un icebreaker din Pathway sau da. ceva, dacă e... Hai să cel puțin trei persoane care au cerere. Dacă nu sunt, coadă, de, da, dacă sunt mai multe vedem. persoane care își doresc. Oricum, cu cât mai mulți, cu atât mai bine. Că sunt destule ședințe în care vă putem încadra și sunt destule cluburi la care puteți merge dacă vreți, cât suntem dacă online, sunt așa că cereri de discurs sunt mai multe. Dacă sunt chiar atât de mulți doritori care vor să țină și discurs de test, puteți face în patru grupe, nu e nicio problemă. E virtual, spațiu avem, deci nu, nu avem problemă de că nu încăpem. Avem camere destule. <laughs> Putem să facem inclusiv patru, patru grupe și să lucrăm în patru grupe și deci nu e o problemă asta. Perfect. Să Mulțumim frumos, video. Can't wait să vedem ce, ce va ieși. Al doilea anunț administrativ pentru această seară este că în, data de 9 și 10 iu- în datele de 9 și 10 iunie vom face două ședințe comune cu colegii de la Oradea. O dată la noi, o dată la ei. Care relații la început? Cătă, vrei să ne dai mai multe detalii? Detaliile nu sunt 100% bătute în, în cui, dar în principiu vrem un Toastmaster dintr-un grup, evaluator general dintr-un, din cealaltă parte și să ne amestecăm între noi o dată pe scena voastră și o dată pe scena noastră. Mă văd aici cu Remu față și mă aude. <laughs> da. Vor mai apărea anunțele. În principiu, cam la fel de multe, ne, cred că ne vom înscrie în Easy Speak ca la o ședință normală și apoi ne împărțim în două săli. Facem pe două un mix, mix and match. Da. Excelent. Bine, mulțumesc. Atât, atât am eu ca anunțuri administrative pentru seara asta. Dacă mai e ceva ce credeți că trebuie discutat în cadrul ședinței și Vreți acum să amintiți? Do it! Dacă nu, am să închid ședința și vorbim în socializare. Mulțumesc foarte frumos pentru că ați fost aici în această seară. Mă bucur foarte mult că v-am văzut. Declar ședința închisă. O seară faină!